so next um, we have um, Ido Leffler that's going to come up and talk to us about how to set up a successful social enterprise. So let's welcome Ido to the stage. Welcome. Hi. Oh, that's loud. I'm not going to scream at you. I'm going to whisper. Hi, everyone. Good morning or good afternoon. Can I get a good afternoon back? I feel like. How is everyone? Good. Don't you fucking love these cardboard boxes? Uh, I, I apologize in advance. I'm Australian. I swear it's um, part of our deal. Uh, I'm Ido Leffler, and I, I guess the first thing I want to do is explain my really quirky accent. Um, I'm Israeli born. I grew up in Sydney, Australia. When I finished university, I moved to Jakarta. I then moved to Mumbai in India. I then moved to Tel Aviv. And now I live with my wife and two beautiful girls in San Francisco. So my accent is somewhat screwed up. Um, to explain that even further, when I moved to Australia, I learned how to speak English from South Africans. So my entire life is, is one big traveling suitcase. And as I was talking earlier, my wife and I tend to be gypsies. So if we're in one spot for more than four weeks, we get nervous. So we quickly rush to the next place. But this is my first time to Berlin, so I look forward to getting completely wasted with all of you tonight. Uh, I believe that's something that's much of a tradition here. But the reason I'm here is I was very fortunate to co-found a company um, seven years ago called Yes2. And Yes2's got quite a weird story. We started with you know, a very simple idea. How do we create a natural beauty brand that would appeal not just to the people wearing Birkenstocks? How could we create a natural beauty brand that appealed to everybody in this room, that would appeal to me and my wife, and that would be something that made people smile, made people happy? Because all the other natural beauty brands... Can I stand on this? Is this stand worthy? No, no, I'm not going to try. I'm, really? The women who made it say yes. No. No. Um, <laughs> that would have been really funny, falling straight through the floor. Uh, but we wanted to create a brand where, which was about positivity. All the other natural beauty brands at the time were standing up, telling the world that the others were bad. Don't do this, don't do that. And we wanted to create a brand that was all about yes. Saying yes to life, saying yes to natural, saying yes to sustainability, and saying yes to having a phenomenally good life at the same time. We didn't want to be someone preaching about what others should do. So we decided to launch a brand that made people feel good about themselves. And that did quite well. I'll fast forward to the end of the story. Today, Yes2 is the second largest natural beauty brand in the US. We're in over 25,000 stores, 24 countries, and it's been awesome. We've had a lot of fun along the way. But at the same time, we've been able to help a lot of people along the way. And what I want to share with you are four very simple things that we did that made us the success that we've become. Because the, base, the fact of the matter is, my business partner and I, we're two schmucks, we're two idiots. You guys are much smarter than we are. And if we could do it so fast and so big, you guys can do it 10 times as fast and 10 times as big. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to tell you a story. It's a very important story about how we got started. I got an opportunity when we first started the brand to have a meeting with a small little retailer in America called Walgreens. Walgreens today has about 8,000 stores. At the time, it had 5,800 stores. And we had an idea that we could go from six products in 16 stores in Israel, and we had the chutzpah. Do you guys know the word chutzpah? We had the cheek to really want to go to that next level. And we thought going from 16 stores to 5,800 stores was a good jump. So what we did, we got a half an hour meeting. I was living in Tel Aviv at the time. I flew all the way from Tel Aviv to Chicago for a half an hour meeting. And the following happened. I was dressed in a suit. I was wearing this horrible orange tie. And I walked into this lobby, and I was sweating. You know when you're going into probably what is what, the most important meeting of your life 
and all you can think about is, oh my God, she's going to notice that there is sweat going down my arms. But what happened was really interesting. Excuse me, what is your name? Julie, can I borrow you? Come, Julie, come up on... Everybody give Julie a big round of applause. <laughs> Julie, where, where are you from, Julie? New Zealand. From New Zealand. Oh my God, New, are we going to... This is the only time in my life because of the America's Cup that I'm actually, as an Australian, excited to see New Zealand win something. <laughs> um, do you, no, tonight. We're going to watch the race tonight. Hopefully, it's the last race. Hopefully, they'll win today. New Zealand are going to win. It's just a question of time. Julie, can I ask you to do me a favor? Can you hold out your hand? So, and don't move. Don't put it down. Just keep holding your hand. It's going to be about another 15 minutes. Just do that. Now, what happened was simple. I walked into this meeting, and as I'm walking into this meeting, I could see this woman, like Julie, her name was Michelle, walking up to me with her hand out. And I literally walked up to her, and I was meeting her for the first time, the biggest meeting of my career. It was make or break. So what I ended up doing was the following. I walked up to her, ready to shake her hand. And rather than shake her hand, and you know in times when things are, like the most important meaning of your life, things happen in slow motion. So I'm walking up, and out of nowhere, something here went, don't do it. Do something different. So what I did, I put my hand down, I put this one up, I moved her hand out of the way, and I leaned in. <laughs> and gave her a kiss on both cheeks and said, this is how we do it in Israel. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Woo. Uh, and that did something really important. It made me different. That half an hour meeting became a three-hour meeting. And all of a sudden, we weren't just a company selling skincare products. We were people talking to people, and we were going to do something really special together. So the first thing I want to tell you, I don't care what your idea is, I don't care what your concept is, make it that you as an individual are different. Because each of you have these unique skills, you're in this room because you're different. Embrace that difference. Whether it's, you know, funky tattoos all the way down your arm, whether it's whatever that, whatever that makes you crazy. Let other people know that crazy. My crazy is that I like to hug random women. Um, <laughs> suppose. But it, it worked for me. The other thing you need to do to really succeed is bring brilliant people around you. These are, now, so that was the first one. Number one, be different. Number two, brilliant people. Every company that we've started, everything that we've got involved with is because we've brought brilliant, positive people with us for the ride. At Yes2, we've brought crazy people. This is some of our team, just a small group of our team. We play, kick, there's a game called kickball. It's like baseball, but you kick the ball. And every year we play against this company called Method in San Francisco. I'm embarrassed to say that they beat us last time, um, but we're going to kick their ass this year. Those soap, horrible soap-making people. Um, but, you know, but to be honest, it's about bringing brilliant people along for the ride and making sure that you can truly make a difference with those people. If somebody's not brilliant in your team, somebody's not positive, let go of them. It's not worth it. Really not worth it. The second thing is you need a kick-ass product. It might be an idea, it might be a service, it doesn't matter what it is, it has to be kick-ass. We live in a world today where mediocre gets zero. None of us are going to go to a restaurant that on Yelp or one of the advice has only got three stars. We're only going to go to a four- or five-star restaurant, because you know that a three-star restaurant is going to suck. So three, you know, unless it's four or five stars, it's not worth even doing. So always have a kick-ass product. In our case, we've got skincare products. Some of you got out, did you guys get our lip balm today in your bag? Everything we want to do needs to be kick-ass. And we don't always get it right. So we listen and we iterate. The world of this millennium is iterate. If something doesn't work, change it, make it better. So we've got some great products, and sometimes your products come from ideas that you never expect to have. So you see that green product, this one here? That one? That product is a product that 
my business partner came up with. He's a finance guy, the least beauty person in the world. And he came up with that product, and I thought he was an idiot. And I told him we weren't going to do it, and it wasn't going to happen. But guess what? I gave, him a I gave that product a chance. I presented it to a retailer. That product is now the number one selling natural facial product in America. You never know where your ideas are going to come from. It might come from the finance idiot in the room. <laughs> the third thing that you need, or the fourth thing, is an amazing cause. Everything that we do has a cause related to it. This is second nature to nearly everybody in this room. But if you can tell the story of your cause, and you're going to learn about how to package a story from Lizzie later on this afternoon, is really about making a difference to you and your family's lives. In our case, we do have something called the Yes to Seed Fund, where we plant organic fruit and vegetable gardens in schools throughout the United States, which are learning gardens or teaching gardens, and micro farms around schools in Kenya. This is Mahi Mahu in Kenya. And we've turned this type of land into micro farms. Our micro farms now feed 10,000 kids a day um, in both Kenya and Tanzania, and we're prepping it to feed 100,000 kids a day using drip irrigation, water collection, digging wells, collecting water from local springs. This school used to get water via donkey. So these are some of our kids that we like to play with. But what I want to end with is just to show you the simplicity of it. I'm not a food guy. I'm, I make cream. I make hair care products. We just had an idea together with another great group to really partner and to build something from our core side that was different and made an impact to us. The technology and some of the things that I've already heard about this morning that you guys are doing blows my mind. So we, as a company, love to partner with people like you and really make a difference. And what I'm going to show you is, is, are the kids, because they do all the talking. They're the best. So you're going to see a video from what we filmed in Oakland, California, and in Mahi Mahu, Kenya, and how we've connected them together. Well, so thank you guys so much. I really look forward to getting nice and drunk with you to celebrate the New Zealand America's Cup win this evening. And most importantly, just hear everything that you guys are working on, which is an inspiration to me. So thank you very much. <laughs>